There has just been an Ask Me Anything with Steve and Sharif about Ashes of Creation and the answers are very, very interesting with quite a bit of new information. Before I continue, I'm aware that my eye is busted. It's just a burst blood vessel. Nothing to worry about. Let me get off your screen now so you don't have to look at me. The four content creators in question was Vladis Gaming, Nice Gaming, Jamie Chaos and The Law Forged. And as I said, it was with Steve and Sharif and basically it was an Ask Me Anything. So they sort of all took it in turns asking questions and then Stephen would reply, and there was quite a bit of information in here. If I'm honest, a lot of the answers were quite detailed, and I'm just going to sort of give you the bullet points. If you want to go and watch it, I would suggest you do that. So the first question was actually about guild tools, and how will you know people be able to get together? And the most interesting thing to come out of that, I think, was the fact that it sounds like there might be something in-game that will let you text people if you subscribe to that system. There'll also be something where you can have a look at like message boards and there'll be other tools that are designed to sort of track the player performance depending on what you're doing. Now hopefully that won't get too toxic, hopefully it's actually something fun, but they're the tools that sort of sounded like will be on offer when we get the game. Not sure how much of that will be in Alpha 2, pretty sure there won't be any text messages from Alpha 2 at least. The next question was about the story arcs and at what level can you participate in and here Stephen basically said it depends on the story arc itself. Some will just be for maybe like high level players but some will actually require participation from lower levels so that it's subsequent so that the next bit can be completed. So it's going to be a little bit of variety there. And then I'm going to sort of combine two different answers which were both about dungeons and being instanced and how many people will be there and the risk versus reward of bringing more people etc. And this is all because a lot of the content will simply be open world and there'll be no limits to who can participate in theory. He also spoke about how there'll be different people on different floors and how you might like bump into a different group and that might cause a little bit of friction. But in the main, most of the content will be open world. Some will indeed be instance. There will be instance raids, instance dungeons and stuff like that, as well as maybe actually having some instance rooms, which was very interesting. But yes, in theory, in the actual open world raids, there could be PvP. Now you might also be wondering about the scaling and this is something that has sort of been at my mind quite a bit recently. What is the downside to bringing a lot of people to make the content easier? And yes, it will scale, but that scaling might be open to abuse. It's obviously going to try and track PvE actions over PvP. Maybe some groups will come in and try and kill it and if they do, then they'll suffer death penalties and then they'll get weaker so their effect will be smaller and smaller. But what ultimately is to stop you just bringing loads of people and to trivialize the content? Well, the answer is simple. You will simply get less rewards. It might be that if you kill a boss, they will drop five items. Therefore, if you take 40 people, each player is less likely to get the items, which honestly, I really like as an idea. In practice, I'm not sure how that will pay out. It might maybe prioritize just smaller groups running around in very elite numbers because they don't want to waste a slot on you, which might mean that content is sort of gated off even more. But, you know, some of you will be completely okay with that. There was a question about why only having one healer and one tank class. And by the way, the people brought being like, why is the tank class called tank? It's a stupid name. And I agree, it's a stupid name. They should probably change that. However, Steven said, this is the way we want it to be. And we actually want the second archetype to be quite strong. And you'll actually need off tanks and off healers and that kind of thing. For example, a fighter will be able to maybe off tank if they pick tank as a secondary. And to be fair, they might be able to do it without, it, it wasn't actually 100% clear when he said that. But what they want is if you are any class, and then you pick a secondary tank or a healer, it will be quite impactful. Doesn't really explain why you couldn't have more than one tank or healer to me, but fair enough. My worry with this is that if you want a tank, you basically are screwed if you don't pick tank and you might sort of get pigeonholed, which is completely fine because choices should have consequences, but it could come at the cost of people having fun. I mean, that's a whole different conversation. Let's not get into it too much here. There was a question which is very dear to my heart, talking about active block, dodge and sprinting. All the classes are going to have stamina and these three actions are going to use stamina. And they're actually going to be in something called a universal progression tree. So everybody will have this, it doesn't matter what class you are. However, you will be using the same points to spend as you would for your normal standard class slash archetype. And they actually said they would be talking more about this in late summer or midsummer. 
which if I'm honest, that sort of sounds to me that the Alpha 2 might be September, but you know, speculation on my part. And the next question is basically, will there be a way of testing the secondary archetype with your class before you try it? And the answer was a little bit disappointing for me, and it was that there will be no preview, but of course you can swap. The problem is, swapping is quite a long process. Now whilst your choice obviously should matter for your reputation etc, picking a choice when you don't know what the impact will be, to me sort of sounds bad and I sort of hope at some point they revisit this and let you try out the secondary archetypes just so you have some kind of feel and you're not completely going in blind. Obviously you can probably google it and obviously it'll sort of tell you something but you don't really get to feel it until you actually try it. Now the next question was something pretty damn big and it was talking about guild passives. And the idea being here that if you're in a smaller guild you'll have more passives so that you can compete with bigger guilds but the problem with that is if you have them too strong then you'll have a specific meta for the size of guild and that's not something what they want. So what they're going to do basically is each guild is going to be broken up into different groups. So you'll maybe have like a core group or then maybe you'll have like a, a flanking group or a nighttime group or what have you. And it sort of sounds like there'll be a limited number of passives, therefore having more groups might minimize the strength, but obviously you'll get advantages by the fact that there are more of you and you can do more. These passives, by the way, sound pretty strong potentially, and they're going to be quite impactful. One example they was given was crit rate, regen values, and there was one where he said it could possibly negate a spell like every 30 seconds. To me, that sounds pretty crazy and pretty wild. There was a little question about the intended time to kill, and he said on average we sort of expect it to be like 10 to 15 seconds, but it could maybe be 30 seconds depending on if it's like a tank or something like that. Now a lot of the Twitch chat at that point was like, oh that's way too short. But honestly, 10 to 15 seconds is actually quite long. It might sound short, but trust me, if you try that in a game, it'll feel like pretty like, sizable, I think. And they said that this will then emphasize coordination because let's say there's two of you trying to kill somebody. Well, instead of killing them in 10 seconds, you kill them in five seconds. And that coordination will become much more important. There was a question about economic nodes and player shops and stuff like that. The key thing that came out of that is that actually if you have an economic node then your player shop can be anywhere in the world. For example you could literally rock it up in an open world raid and maybe sell potions. That's pretty crazy. I'm not going to delve too much into that question because quite frankly didn't really understand it. One thing that is interesting though is that it sounds like the economic node won't be in alpha 2. It sounds like pretty much all of them will be scientific slash academic. So all the nodes will be based on elections in alpha 2 Obviously at some point they'll add more and more. It does sort of make me question how full is Alpha 2, but maybe not the question for now. Then we had a couple of questions about classes and weapons and that kind of thing. It was revealed that rogues do actually have true stealth, which is not proximity dependent. Pretty sure we knew that from the caravan video. But then Steven said the rogue is very likely not going to be in Alpha 2. And in fact, the rogue and the summoner will be missing. And the ones that will be in Alpha 2 will be the tank, the ranger, the fighter, the mage, the bard and the cleric. People were a little bit disappointed about that. However, keep in mind it's an Alpha 2. It's not the live game. They'll be there when it goes live. They did say that summoner and rogue will be in like the first major patch. There was also a question about weapon trees and which weapons will be available and which ones will have weapon trees. So there'll be a lot of weapons available. But the weapon trees that will be fully fledged out will be these. The one-handed mace, the one-handed sword, bell books, wands, short bow and long bow, two-handed spear, two-handed sword and dual daggers. Now you can dual all of the one-handed weapons and it sort of sounds like you'll have to create a combination of the two. I don't really know how that's going to work. And actually the dual weapon is its own progression tree. And I'm not really sure how that will tie in. Like if you're dual wielding one handed swords, do you get any bonuses from the sword weapon tree? Not 100% sure about that. And then the next question is about crafting. And basically he said here that crafters, by the way, can use any station in any node. But the main problem will be the fact that you need the materials, which won't be at the node unless you've brought them all there. And then how do you do that? And if you are doing it at your home node where you've got the benefits, then you might be paying reduced fees and you might be able to do like unique enhancements to the crafts, which obviously something you're probably going to want to have. Here, look, I'll save you looking at my dodgy eye. There were more questions and answers. But for me, that was sort of like the key information. The actual stream was like an hour and 20 minutes. But if you want to go and watch it, do it. If you're that kind of person, then go ahead, right? But I think for more casual fans, 
this is sort of the level we're at and there was some very interesting stuff in there shops being anywhere in the world pretty wild the dungeons and the rewards pretty cool i really liked the q a some people were saying it was the best q a and yeah i liked it as well let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you want to come and see my dodgy eye over on twitch i won't be streaming on saturday but i will be streaming on sunday and again just to be clear there's nothing to worry about with my eye it's just a visual thing burst blood vessels typically aren't anything to be concerned about if i feel any other symptom don't worry i will go to the doctors don't don't stress i'm, I'm fine and yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below have a most beautiful day like and subscribe goodbye